But first at six, the new plan to curb rising inflation, fighting it by increasing costs. A local expert says the seemingly unusual idea could work. Inflation's at the top of minds for so many as it's raised how much we pay for things we buy every single day. Today, the Federal Reserve signaled it will raise interest rates. Now, this isn't going to happen immediately. Experts think it'll start in March. And if you've been following the stock market this week, you've noticed a lot of ups and downs. But what does that volatility have to do with prices at the grocery store? According to experts, quite a bit. IT team reporter Caitlin Canute joins us to explain as part of her weekly series tracking inflation in the metro. Once again, this comes down to that word we've been hearing so much about lately, inflation. You'll recall last week we consulted an economics professor at UMKC. He explained inflation as the increase or decrease in the prices consumers are paying, usually an increase. For most of us, we've really noticed inflation every week as we're buying groceries. Unfortunately, that same expert we consulted says the fastest way to stop the rise in inflation is actually to raise interest rates. And it's that possibility that had the stock market reacting wildly earlier in the week. But how would paying more in interest rates help inflation go down? And while that seems counterintuitive that, you know, if we want to fight inflation, why do we want to increase the cost? But the idea is to get people to slow down, to take your foot off the gas, to stop spending as much money. So there's a little less activity um, so that, you know, we can get closer to the, the employment level that we're actually at now. Basically, he's saying if interest rates are higher, most of us will spend less and that will give the supply chain the time it needs to catch back up. Remember, Professor Wigger says this is something that's been building for years, even decades. He describes it as a smaller workforce, meaning fewer people making the goods and fewer truck drivers, meaning less trucks to transport the goods, along with a reliance on parts made overseas whose factories experienced shutdowns during COVID. We understand there's a lot to this issue, so that's basically the Cliff Notes version. As for how this is impacting you, we're tracking that using groceries, trying to give you a better idea. A reminder, each week our I-team is checking in at five different stores across the metro. This isn't so much about a comparison about who has the cheapest eggs or milk, since those brands can vary from store to store. Instead, it's more of a cross sample of what inflation looks like week to week at a local level. For example, this week, here's a look at what a dozen eggs will cost you. At the hy in the North land, it will cost $2.39. The good news is that price hasn't increased since last week. At the Olathe Walmart, you'll pay $1.81. That's also holding steady from last week. At the Aldi in Brookside, a dozen eggs costs $1.35. That's up 10 cents actually from just last week. At the Westport Sunfresh, you'll pay $1.79. That's up 4 cents from last week. And at the Leewood Price Chopper, it's $1.69. That's also a four cent increase from last week. You can follow our efforts to track inflation online and stay tuned for another update on this, this time next week. For the KSHB 41 I team, Caitlin Canute, back to you.